mankind is too weak to comprehend who God is. There has never been a technology designed sufficiently enough to enable a man, a mortal man, to understand who his creator is. It's like a phone trying to understand who created it. The best it can do is to Google. And the information you find in Google is put by men. But there are some information that are not available because they are not made available. If God chooses not to make himself available, no man can see him. The Bible says God dwells in, in, in a realm all by himself. And no man can approach him. Because no man see God and live. It's not because mankind do not desire to see God. But it's because they don't sustain the capacity to be able to see God. The presence of God that makes a life can key. When you approach God, you must understand you are dealing with hollow things. Men of old understand that. And before they enter into the temple of God, they porch and purify themselves. But eventually, there is something in them that may not be in alignment. Because when you come before God, God is a being that is aligned. And anybody that is not aligned is not captured within the radar. And that is why there is a frequency where God broadcasts. If you don't remain aligned to that frequency, you may never hear God till you die. The reason why we come before the presence of God and we are careful and conscious enough to cry for him to help us is because, because he came yesterday does not mean he's coming today. You may be so shocked that the God you knew yesterday is no longer with you today because God is not a respecter of persons. The man everybody hates may be the man that has genuine intimacy with God. And the man everybody celebrated may be the one that God rejected. Why? Because he doesn't have a place with God. In the days God approved of men, men must be conscious enough to understand that the approval of men may not be the approval of God. But that God approved of you yesterday does not mean he's approving of you today. Everyone that works with God understands the need for him to be conscious, to be aligned with God. I don't care whether you used to be on fire for God. Are you on fire for God now? It doesn't matter whether you are ordained a bishop. What is the ordination speaking in your life right now? You can be up today, you are down tomorrow. No man remain up forever. No. Everything that go up must come down. It's the same way. Spiritual growth is irreversible. Only physical growth is not reversible. You can never become two years old again. You can never become three years old again. But in the realm of the spirit, a man that is 40 years can become one year. In fact, he can become 12 months. He can become two months. He can become one day. Some have even entered decadence. Paul speaking. He said, anytime you are put before God, you must understand that your heart must be right. And you must ensure that you don't become like the foolish Galatians who have begun in the spirit and now they are ending in the flesh. Let me tell you the reason why men end in the flesh is because they become familiar with the things of the spirit. Men that do business with God in deeper waters are never familiar with God. It's only carnal men. Men that have not seen every potency of the dimensions of God and they look upon God. And anytime you come before the presence of God, you come as a big man. I was here, I was crying. I was asking God, what will I say? Because sometimes when you know too much, it becomes a challenge. The problem is not anything I will say. I need to be able to trust God to hijack my communication. To grant unto me utterance that everything I will say can bless everybody here, including the two-year-old. How do you think I will do that one? Because administration has switched to spirit administration. And if you cannot administer spirit and life unto people, you are wasting their time. So anytime you come into the presence of God, if you enter into the secret place, your cry is that God, I'm here again. I know they're here with me yesterday, but I don't know whether you are here now. 
and sometimes you may wait in vain for long and God is trying your heart to see whether you are familiar it is to this intent that men say I will not let you go until you bless me see let me tell you when Paul was encountering God his friends were there many people are there God loves us all but let me tell you he encountered those that are, that are desperate hungry seeking and searching and it doesn't matter your title if you are not hungry there will be no need for you to be supplied he said is anyone thirsty let him come they were done eating but he was asking are you still thirsty I don't know about you but my hunger cannot be satisfied sometimes I'm done listening to a message I add another one again there is sleep in my eye I say no I need another one I need another one I'm done reading chapter 1 I say let me go to chapter 2 let me go to chapter 3 do you love the things of God do you value it or is it too familiar to you if it is God you are looking for eh? sometimes 2-2 two, two verse per day will not do you when you are done reading verse 1 verse 2 the Holy Ghost will take you to verse 3 verse 4 verse 5 verse 6 before you know it the chapter has finished my friends there is an urgency in the spirit this race is not a sprint it's a marathon and anytime you want to do a marathon journey eh, you don't start so fast never you go gradually in fact sometimes be, be moving like this let them take up you know that the journey is far and sometimes the men that begin they don't really end we were on campus sir. so many of us gather we say we have the burden to conquer the region this one say he had this encounter this one say he had this encounter this one say okay no Allah all of us had the encounter we are not going to allow ourselves die like that we gather together we say let's begin to pray one one hour every day let God change the land. We read about men like John Knox. We read about men like A. S. R. Alem. We read about men like John G. Lake. We read the mighty things men did. And we say they have one life on the earth. And they live it as though they have ten. We must make our life count on earth. And all of us burn ourselves with an oath. We say we will not live. We will not die until we become living witness on the earth. When we gather, we began to pray you will thought that just because your other friend that had encounter and saw himself doing wonders for the kingdom will remain for so long my brother i realized that encounter is not enough you need hunger because encounters are product of hunger and revelation one encounter is not enough my friends you need multiple encounter no wonder paul went back to the wilderness of arabia what was he looking for you will backslide if you are not hungry and thirsty for God. It's not a, a it's not something that you begin bad. No. Sometimes the higher you go, the more you need to spend time more with God. Because your consumption rate has just increased. A baby may be eating one spoon and we'll be all, okay. Some of us need to eat 13 spoon. When we gather, we began to pray. Every day, one one hour. We say, Oh God, men say, Give them this land or they die. Give them this land or we do give us or we die. It was not up to two years, three years. I will lie to you. The first attack that came was relationship among all of us that had visions. So everybody, we, we neglected the goal where we gathered together. And this one begin to talk about marriage which i know that in the next five years none of us have that plan because the average of us does not even have the money to pay bride price so when we are coming for prayers the body we used to hold hands and come before praying we were existing and we don't know that we are leaking out god and all the hunger and the body you can live here with a heavy body as you go back there you just it out Some of you, you will use CZ movie to water it down. 
and I thought it was only like that let me tell you a time came the moment we are supposed to come and pray that's when the other guy and the other girl are planning to go to there's a play we call Frizzler Frizzler in Zaria Abu Zaria Frizzler and sometimes they may be together in love garden and they forget that we had prayer to conquer the nation and love has put them in an atmosphere that they are slaves it was not long some of them left the other ones came and said Kai wisdom is profitable to direct we are here to pray we are here in this school to read book we are not here to pray they said our jeep is going down let's leave this prayer small and go and focus on our book and increase our GP. They left the place of prayer. They opened themselves to an attack of the devil. The more they read, the more they did TDB, the more when they enter the exam hall, their head is blank. And we come out from the place of prayer. And sometimes my eyes is red in the exam hall and I'm seeing like angels writing all the answers for me. And all the people that left to go to organize their GP, they were never the best. Neither were they the second. Today, I don't know where they are. And you see, when God begins to do things with you, he, there is a season. That knocking will not remain forever. No. You see, this desire you are having for God will not last forever. If you don't fuel that hunger, fuel that passion, it will die down. Immediately when they left, I'm telling you the truth. I realized they are failures because they are distracted, not because they are praying. We pray only one or two hours in a day. What did they do with the other 22 hours? They were distracted. And even when they left that two hours prayer, they could not add up anything that will make them see succeed in the academies. And that was when I realized as many people say they fail because they pray, we say we succeed because we prayed. My friends, if something does not fuel this your hunger, the devil will come and steal that vision, that dream you are having. You are not the first I used to have it, let me tell you. I thought I was the only one that God is showing me that we conquer region. I discovered we were so many that God gave that dream. And God was looking for who will last for long. Because God was looking for a man. He was looking for a witness that can stand the test of time. My friends, you are going to be tried. You are going to be tested. And it doesn't matter how it is. Temptation will be natural in your life. If you don't overcome this thing, you may never have a voice in time. A voice in time is a living witness. And if your voice cannot be heard in time, it meant that you never live on the earth at all. If you live and die and your voice is not registered here, it means that you never live. God will have to send somebody with your name again to come and represent. That was why John the Baptist asked, are you the one who is to come or should we expect another? Because in the archives, it looks as though you do not exist at all. Check all through scripture from Genesis to Revelation. There are no, it's not everybody name that is mentioned. People live it on the earth. Millions, if not billions of people live. The only people name that were mentioned in the archives are men that work with God and had impact in this life. This world that you see is full of too many people. In fact, the whole of Nazareth State is full of so many people. Your name is among too many names. You may never be remembered if you die. Nobody will care if you perish. But by the time you are able to become a voice, in the days of your rising, in the days of your lifting, even if you go down, the whole nation will shake. There are too many people on this earth to remember you. If you must be remembered, you must become a witness. Only witness are remembered. Even in the days of their dying, they still speak. Because today, the blood of the martyr is the seed of the gospel. They didn't just die like that. No. Jesus Christ died. Yet again, you and I have become progenitors. 
it was not long enough the few of us that remain the other one said kai baba you cannot remain broke forever now no money no money say let's leave this prayer let's go and do some business <laughs> and they gather money from here gather money from here gather this one capital when they went with capital capital went and the frustration enter they went and went and collected loan again <laughs> my brother seek ye first the kingdom of god and its righteousness then all other things will be added to you god can never trust you with anything eh, if you don't seek him that's the truth and the people that felt that their life is not important until they had money eh? They left the place of prayer and they went in pursuit of money. Till today, we have not seen them. What I'm trying to let you understand is that a wind will see blow again because we are too much. We are too much. Some people need to be quarantined, others need to be separated. There's a separation that needs to happen because somehow we are too many. Everybody is on fire, everybody is a prophet, everybody is an evangelist everybody is an apostle we need some heavy persecution we need the genuine ones and the only way we can be able to have the true ones is if something must happen to test our level of alignment to God let the devil come to key let those that don't know the Lord they are God let them fall let the few that know God so that men cannot boast again There are too many talkers, few witness. And until God raised for us witness in our land, we will live and die, and God will never be represented. It's the same question I need to ask you. Are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect another? Because you may be here and you are not really interested to make impact. At the tail end, among so many of us that have so many tremendous encounters, we are not up to five that are surviving now. And these were papas, mamas on campus. They were people that had plenty of protocol. Some of them were my mentors. They mentor us. Some of them we learned prayer from them. Some of them taught us scripture. I used to sow seed in their life. Help me. I realized that somebody can take you here. Eh? And he will begin to go down. You begin to go up. In this journey, you will determine how far you want to go. And sometimes the way to the top is actually downward. Any building that does not have a strong foundation can never go high. There is a limit to which it will go. Terrible times are coming. Terrible times are coming. A wind is going to blow. That wind is going to separate us. Many people you see that are making mouth now. They may not have a voice again. Some of them may be your papa and your mama. They will not be remembered. Ask yourself the question. How many papas and mamas on campus end up becoming anything in God? All the people that carry big, big title on campus. On campus, campus ministry. How many of them end up becoming anything? Many of them, when they were done, they used their title of Papa and Mama to get a better job in the society. And with heavy carnality, they continue to live their life. Many backsliders today, if you ask them, they will tell you, I was the NCCF Papa. I was the prayer coordinator. I was the president. I was the vice president. But the only thing they had was those titles. They were not witness enough. They could not testify of Jesus. Let your prayer coordinator not stop after campus. If it stops, then you are wasted. And let it not be that because they give you prayer coordinator, you no longer have a relationship with God. You are, they are planning to kill you. I'm not joking. 
Let it not be that because they ordain you a pastor, an apostle, a deacon. Now, Jesus is far from you. You better drop that thing and come closer to Jesus. Because on the tail end, nobody will remember your title. He said he called us that we may become his witness. You have to be men and women that have no ambition of yourself. You must, your desire has to be to represent Jesus. Wherever you find yourself, and it doesn't matter how many billion go into your account, let it not change your conviction. No! Many of you today, if God bless you with a certain amount of money, nobody can talk to you again. Dr. Paul Lenetje said, some of you here, you raise your shoulder that you have five million naira. There are people that have five billion dollars. And yet again, they are putting normal shirt. And they are working as if they are not really existing. You want to see 100,000 on your account now. You want to do shaggy. You want to do big boy, do big girl. You don't understand the way of the kingdom. And this is the reason why you will not last long. Because there is nothing that does not have God that ever lasted. Nothing. Check again. I'm just angry in my spirit. I don't even know whether I can do the teaching I intend to do. I don't really know. The living witness. See, there are few pastors that speak for Jesus in today. There are only few ministers that are truly living witness in keeping to kingdom business. Only few. Because a living witness die more for God to live more. He said that I may decrease that he may increase. We are not called to blow. I'm very serious. See, when God was shooting you from eternity into time, his intention was not for you to be popular. You must understand this. Everyone that you see today that is popular in this kingdom is not because he do anything apart from spending time with God, eh? fulfilling purpose, administering God. That's all what we do. If you have any ambition to glorify yourself, God will leave you the way you are until you die. And per adventure, if a door opens, that is not of God, you may die faster. One of the desires of God is that all of us become living witnesses. Living witnesses. That we can be able to represent a God that is alive, not a God that is dead. I don't know how many people will tell you that God used to do this before used to do that before but right now God is no longer alive they talk the stories of Bible and they cannot live the reality of scriptures why? the scripture is, a, is dead in the hand of somebody that is dead in the spirit the scripture is alive in the hands and in the life of someone that is alive in the spirit The only thing that can keep your spirit alive is when you have a hunger that cannot be satisfied. And the desire of God is that you and I represent it. Act. Let me, let's look at some scripture. Please let me appreciate everyone, my mom, my dad, my friends. Time is gone. Let me see if I can cast some body in two minutes. Then we pray. Deuteronomy. 17.6 You see at the mouth of two witnesses Or three witnesses Shall he that is worthy of death Be put to death By the mouth of one witness He shall not be put to death See one witness Deuteronomy 19.15 now 
Say so one witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin. Is any in any sin that is sinned at the mouth of two or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. The issue of witness is a serious issue. The reason why you are alive today is because someone is bearing witness that you should be alive. The reason why you are even a Christian today is because someone sits in a capacity to bear witness that you should live. Jesus Christ came to testify that you and I are worthy of the mercy of God of the forgiveness of God we are worthy of the redemption of God he came as a living witness to give expression to who God is but that is not enough he also shows the pattern of how to become also living witness if everything that God did to Jesus Christ ended up with him then me and you are of all men most miserable because Jesus Christ may be on the earth right now but he is as a spirit on the earth and until he can walk through people that he can use them as representative God will be so limited why do you think the devil is looking for men why do you think God is looking for men all of them are looking for witness those that can attest to the fact that they are alive God is alive but he's living in me is God living inside of you where is the devil have you ever seen the devil before no but we have seen his witness we have seen his agents we have seen his ambassadors we have seen his legislators we have seen his ministers we have seen his apostles there are men and women that are carriers of the entity the deity called the devil but there are men and women that are carriers of the supreme one and all of us are living realities living entities that represent and give credence to a personality beyond time the strength of everyone's life is that something superior than him possess him occupied him then he represents him what was the last time you talk by the enablement of the spirit everything you say come from the from your mind when will you begin to speak from your spirit if you have never been given access that out of your belly flow rivers of living waters that out of your belly flow prophecy my friends it means that something is hindering your access to divine realities how do you think god will work on the earth how when was the last time god came down on the earth and walk on this earth you will never see but you see men are envoys of God men are emissaries of God and if God cannot find men and women that are his envoys that are his emissaries God is handicapped and you see he's not just supposed to remain inside church no in fact the real work happened outside of church the problem why the church is a very good place God can come in the church but how many of you can you gather in your school in your classroom and begin to sing and begin to chant and God can come the reason why you don't see your classroom as a place where God can come is because you have not yet become a living witness because a living witness moves with his own civilization and one of the first attack of the devil upon a living witness is his culture because what makes you a witness is the culture Look at the book of Acts. Acts 1 8. The Bible says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be what? Witness unto me, both in what? Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and not to the utmost part of the earth. He was trying to let them understand that the reason why he felt need to even give them anything. Is because he wants them to represent him. It's not because he just like them. No, it's because God needs a voice. God needs to talk on the earth. God needs to be hard on the earth. But how can God be hard on the earth until someone utter a word and it will be said that an angel spoke? 
it will be said that an immortal spoke if anytime you hear god speak on this earth it's because somebody positioned himself enough to hear him because god does not speak anyhow god does many things without asking us but if you want to hear and understand he speaks only to witness people that can be able to comprehend and understand but these people can only be able to do that when they have received his power why does he have to give them his power it is because the speakings of god can only be understood by the infrastructure of the power of god a man that does not have power within him can never be able to hear god the bible says god can do mightily exceedingly abundantly above what you can think and imagine according to his power at working within you when you see god walk in a man's life and the man become an emissary an envoy of god it's because there is something in his inside that grants that advantage it doesn't matter how old you are when god possesses you a spirit does not have an age then you stand to testify for or against your witness a witness is one who gives attestation to a fact to a truth a witness is one that has a concrete evidence that cannot be argued how can you speak about a god that you do not know you are not a witness every time you paraventure go to court to go and defend somebody and yet again you don't have evidential proof just know that you'll be the one that will be jailed it's the same thing trying to speak about god and you don't know him that is why the sons of skiva we are beaten by those demons why they were no witness although they are christians go and find out who is skiva skiva is a righteous man his sons do not understand that it's not just good enough to have a christian name do you know jesus christ never called his disciples christians the word christian came from antioch right it was a name that was given to them by unbelievers he said these ones look like christ they act like christ but they are actually supposed to become the christ but why are they saying they are looking like that means they were not the christ for them to become the christ they must become witness a believer is anybody that believes anything you can believe that this phone is your god you can believe that this handkerchief is your god you are a believer a christian is anybody that believes in christ but a living witness is somebody that has come into the reality of the christ the evidential working of the reality of christ now he is possessed by the holy spirit and his life is engineered by another energy that is when he cannot be able to bear witness because you cannot bear witness until you are a witness yourself a witness is not a word a witness is a personality anytime they say where is the witness they are not talking about a word they are talking about a person that represents the truth a person that defines any argument you lied you didn't do it you didn't do it until somebody come with a recording full recording that exactly when you were stealing the money from the bank eh? and they are pushing it to let you understand every minute and every second suddenly you keep quiet how many of you have been lying before and they just brought an evidence and you don't know the lie to lie again i was in that situation before i didn't do it i didn't do it why are you people judging me like that all this kind of life all this kind of assumption and they say oh we are talking too much come whose face is this one is this one you i said okay 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 sorry eh? sorry 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 witness and every argument and so long as there is not a witness you don't have a case when you go to court and you don't have a witness eh? don't even go because you're already wrong the system of justice does not understand a bag. No, it understands witness. It's the same way in this kingdom. Devil don't care to know you are the son of God. You must witness. 
if you don't witness he will still ask you are you really the son of god and when a man has not come into that reality where he is asked the question he'll be afraid when they will ask jesus they say are you the one who is to come or should we expect another what they are asking me are you a witness enough he said come he went and opened the blind eye that was like one of the first time that jesus christ went intentionally to open blind eye to heal the sick because many more times jesus christ will be passing a blind man will say heal me a sick man but when john the baptist asked and questioned the credibility of jesus jesus christ said please follow me where are the blind eye blind eye open lame walk cripple walk he said go and tell john what you see john does not need argument again because there is a witness if today they gather pastors and they say you have been preaching about healing for the past 10 years this person is sick heal him you will see pastors like we begin to shake like this if today they gather all of us they put gun in our head he said deny jesus deny jesus or you die you will be shocked how many reverend how many apostles how many prophets will say my name is muhammad my name is abu Bakr. why because you don't know jesus a witness is willing to die and until you are willing to die you are not a witness and any man that is still afraid of his life will lose it jesus christ said whosoever that want to gain his life in this kingdom is to lose it see nobody know about is it the brother the brother who that lady that died the brother nobody know about her but the day she died it doesn't matter whether she died for jesus or died for her foolishness but she died eh, as one that was a witness and everybody know her my friends there is a price to pay eh, to be popular one of that price is are you willing to die when jesus christ was with his apostles peter james the sons of zebedee right peter who you know james their mother came and met jesus say please grant that one of my son will sit here the other one will sit here so all the other apostles are useless and you would think it's the mother that think about this no it's not the mother all of them agree together just that the mother was the one that had the stature to come and meet jesus and say my son my son i know you like this my two children in this your new kingdom let one sit here let the other one sit here let the other apostles be at the back jesus christ look at her he say you this thing you ask is very hard but the problem is can they truly drink of the cup of the suffering can they truly partake of the pain and do you know what they foolishly say what you see the one the problem of this kingdom is when you begin this journey speaking in tongues nobody tell you that the devil may touch your gp sometimes but he will come because part of the requirement part of the dealings is that sometimes god will allow your gp your gp they will touch your result Bam. so everybody that is not speaking in tongues we have a a a and they will not give you c or maybe they will give you f and guy you like it i'm praying like this why now why now what god want to do with you is you see in the next five years the people that may have a a a we may not even know where they exist some of them may be dead by now how many people have died within the last shakinah thing now why are you not part of them when you put life and death everybody is willing to give up anything you don't know that your prayer you're representing jesus has added more life to your days and so long as you have more life you are more richer than the richest person because the richest person cannot buy his life they say yes but immediately when they say yes what they didn't understand was that jesus christ meant what he was saying and in the day when the cup came first it was james that the key 
suddenly they carry James when they took James Shebi he said when they carry him they put his neck and they cut it and the neck went out that is what it means to sit on the right side and on the left side when they cut the neck of James many people think that he just died like that no he became a matayat and in the ranking in the spirit matayat are rewarded first first When they took James neck God did not intervene it was because he decided to partake of it it was the cup of death and John partake of the cup of suffering the sons of Zebedee how many are they are they not three when the mother we are talking to the other one said I no want so when John the beloved when the cup of suffering came they began to persecute them they carried john the beloved and put him inside water they tied stone upon his neck and put him inside water for three days he drank water his stomach became very big and god ensured that the water came out again he stayed inside water and you see biology was altered i know you read biology but it's a waste of time it was altered because that one was not written in module one module two suddenly how can a person that is a mammalian live like a reptile i believe like a what an amphibian and suddenly john began to a goose goose appeared and he began to breathe like a fish and he remained inside water for three days what was he eating it was because he said yes it was painful but it was part of what he has to suffer and they took him out again and they said ah you will not die they fry oil you know where i from zaria i used to eat ah uh, one day i was passing i went to buy our somebody apostle you are eating our i said i have been eating our before the anointing come since the anointing came jesus christ did not say i should stop eating our Thank God you are not my God. I will eat our, I will eat masala. Who are you? The Bible said Jesus Christ was passing through a corn farm and they plucked corn they were eating. Don't you read your Bible? So, those our people, they used to make the oil fry very well and they would put the our inside. That was how they carried John and they put him inside oil. John became like our. As they were turning, he laughed at them. <laughs> they turned again. <laughs> they don't know what to do with him. They saw a man that cannot die. They saw a man that refused to die. Because when they kill everybody, this one cannot be killed. What he said? Yes, I want to be a living witness. And suddenly, according to church history, they tie him with rope in his hand. And they drag him, drag him from where he was in Jerusalem to the island of Patmos. Island of Patmos is a desert place where you are supposed to go there and live with wild animals, no food, no water. So even if you don't want to die, you will die by starving. There is one law that I know that anything you starve will die naturally. Anything. And they almost succeeded with John. Because when they banished him to the island of Patmos, when they tie him, they use an animal, they drag him. His head did not break. His leg did not break. Nothing happened to his body. He was just jumping like a stone until he reached the island of Patmos. They say, stupid boy, stay here. But when John was suffering, he said, I want to be a living witness. When he was suffering, and he was about to die just when he was suffering and suddenly when his eyes was about to close the book of revelation opened you see i was in the spirit on the lord's day and i saw hey we thought the bible has finished
but there was someone that is a living witness and because all the other apostles never want to suffer they want to reign with jesus that is good but there are men that want to partake of another dimension beyond time and somebody went and borrowed a book a book that was not part of the new testament it was a testament to come till today you cannot fully explain the new testament the, the book of revelation is not a book in this time it's a book in a world to come but somebody went through a suffering as a living witness and he brought that reality say i was in the spirit on the last day and i saw mind you what he saw was the revelation of jesus christ but jesus christ came and lived and yet again could not see that revelation himself but a man walked so much went through pain went through persecution able to reveal who jesus is and he begin to reveal to us that there is another dimension and there are scrolls and books and there are still millennia to come and he spoke to us about a new heaven and let me tell you that man still refused to die because when he was done he wrote those books to angels and angels took those books back to those churches Angels appear in churches and knock. Say, Who are you? Say, I am Angel Gabriel. I brought you a letter from John the Beloved. Say, We thought he is dead. No, he is a living witness. He lived. He was one among that when Jesus Christ said, Whosoever believe in me, he shall never die. He chose to believe. Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection, I am the life. He that believe in me, although he is dead, he will live. But he that liveth and believe in me will never die. There is a realm of life that you can be so anchored upon that even when they want to kill you, you cannot die. I'm telling you, don't just be a normal Christian. Don't just be a pastor. Be a man and a woman that carry the fiber of the soul life that anytime you approach anything that is dead, it can give life. The Bible said the first Adam was a living soul, but the second Adam became a life giving spirit that is a living witness because a witness come to speak about life and communicate life but eventually you are already tagged for death according to the justice system they said they will kill you tomorrow and suddenly somebody appeared and said no live again that person has given you life he has become a life giving spirit and that is what god intend of you and i that we can be in the territory yet again i am in lafia and people used to die but now I am administering life unto you. And if you can believe the word of this life, you will live again. And Jesus Christ speak unto them. He said, as I am speaking unto you, immortal life is communicated. Eternal life is communicated. It's left for you to believe it. If you don't believe it, you will die like a chicken. It is the goal of God that you and I become a life-giving spirit. But you can never be able to become that until you understand what are referred to as the dimensions of a living witness because a living witness is actually one who has been attested one who has been accredited one who has been approved one who has been authorized by god and he has been given the resources of heaven on the earth he is like an ambassador no ambassador of any nation is stranded in another nation the ambassador of the united states of america He's in Nigeria. He doesn't spend naira. He spends dollar. The embassy of America. You cannot tell them to obey the rule of Nigeria. No. When you enter the territory of the embassy of the United States of America in Abuja, they obey the rules and regulations of America. They don't care about Nigeria. They are in Nigeria yet again. They are not felt by the infirmities of Nigeria. And if you try to kill one of them, the whole of the U.S. will come against you. Why? Because they are in this territory representing the United States of America. That is what we must understand. That as a living witness, we are on this earth to represent another civilization. So Jesus Christ looked at Pilate. He said, nobody has the power to kill me. I lay my life out. I lay it down. You cannot kill a living witness no when we are done we give up the ghost the day you hear that i'm dead i'm not dead i'm assuring you 
I will come back again. I will appear to you in your dreams. I will appear to your children, children. I will appear. And in the day you need somebody to stand by you and fight, I will be there to war with you. Do you know how many times I have seen the cloud of witnesses? What did they call them cloud of witnesses? It is because they die, yet again they speak. Many years, watch money will never allow me to sleep. Every night he appeared to me, DL Muti, and all of these people let me understand that what they did on the earth that was not completed. And until I continue, they can never level the books of the witness. The Bible speaking about the archives of faith, and he went back to try to let us understand that there are men who do faith, they conquer territories, they raise the dead, they cast out demons, but there are others who by their faith and through their faith they endure cruel mockery. They endured persecution. They went through, they went through tires. And they died. And these ones, this earth is not worthy to mention their names. And the Bible said, they without us are not being made perfect. The reason why you are called to represent God today is by the venture because your mother prayed for you. Your uncle prayed for you. Your father prayed for you. And although they died, yet again you must live. In the days where they kill more Christians in Kano, more believers rise. You and I are living witness. But we cannot witness to this truth until we understand that we are envoys. The day an ambassador of China begins to behave like a Nigeria, he has lost it. And the Bible says, We are not of this earth. Here we are here. Do you realize that one of the things that happened to Shedar, Meshach, and Abednego was simple? One of the goals eh, of the kingdom of Babylon is just to take away the culture of Babylon from those guys. That's all. I told you, a living witness, his strength is his culture. Well, you cannot take away his culture, eh? <laughs> he is still who he is. If you are a Kolo lady and they give birth to you in uh, India, you will not speak Kolo, you will speak India. If you are a plateau person and they give birth to you in, uh, in France, is it France? You will speak French. Because colonization is real. You must understand that kingdom seeks to colonize us. And if God did not colonize it first, something will colonize it. You cannot be neutral. And that is the reason why when Babylon pick all the nobles of Israel, they carry all their kings and all their princes and they brought them to Babylon. What did they do? First of all, they changed their meal. Then they changed their culture of prayer. Everybody that they went with agreed with the idea. Except few boys. They said, we will not bow. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel say it's a lie. We cannot defile ourselves. We have a concentration. We came here with a culture. We are living witness. We are in Babylon. Yet again, we are ambassadors. I know you don't have the embassy of Israel in Babylon. But we came here as an embassy. And as a result of that, we submit to the government of the king of heaven. And they say, oh king, we will not bow. And these men created an embassy in Babylon. And every night, they wake up and they pray to the God of heaven. They refuse to eat of the king's bread. Everybody went and he was eating with the king. This man said no. Why? It was because they know that if they take away their culture, they will take away their tradition. And when they take away their tradition, they will cease from becoming living witness because their concentration will be lost. Because the strength upon which they were living witness was the concentration that was upon them. And so long, Tameshach and Abednego and Daniel can be praying in Babylon, and be serving the God of heaven in Babylon they may be in Babylon but they are still Jews and this is the same thing that is going on the earth now just because you went to America now you too you say <laughs> actually the Bible 
God created Adam and Steve. And now you tell your father that, Daddy, I'm gay. Mommy, I'm a lesbian. You have lost a cup. There are so many of you that just not even, you didn't even went abroad. You were here in Tudamba in Lafia. And suddenly you went to Lagos, University of Lagos, Unilac. As you entered the lack, you forgot that you were a lady that came from your village. And you forget all the moral culture that they put upon you. In your house, nobody mentioned pa party. But now you are the happening lady in party. It's because you have lost a culture. You are no longer a living witness. Because Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in Babylon. And they finally served the God of heaven in Babylon. I learned what's the name of this guy I thought we were done with Naramali we went to J-Boy after J-Boy now we are with Kisdania Kisdania my brother you can't I, will, I flew I cannot sleep Kisdania everywhere Kisdania what's that song again eh you said I don't get a lot, he don't hold. Minister, these people here cannot know. What's that Kiss Daniel new song? Kiss Daniel say any he wants to do the video of the song. He said he's looking for somebody that can mom the song and dance it well. Even choir ladies, even pastors, children, they are trying to sing that Kiss Daniel song and they are tagging Kiss Daniel so that they can be future, future in a canon can song. If is Daniel call you today that he want to feature you come and sing song with him will you go but I, you can make like 30 million from the song I'm not sure you will remain here it's a system that is trying to colonize us they are trying to take away our ability to become living witness so that Jesus Christ cannot have a voice on the earth. Suddenly you go to the musical setup. They said, you want to sing a song? Yes, but don't put Jesus. No Jesus, no God. Say God, God. Say, oh God, yeah, yeah, God. You are gone. You don't belong to us. Babylon has swallowed you. Somebody said, I know they drink alcohol, but if they buy them for me for free, I go drink. You are gone. You are gone. See, me, I know they sleep around, but, but you know, be firewood. After like two months, three months, you go go offload. See, you know, they offload. You are gone. You are gone. You must be able to dedicate yourself and say, Me, I will not bend my knees to the ground. When other people gather together and say, this is naked party. This is masturbation night. This is, they do all kinds of things these days. Pornographic night, masturbation night. When will we do prayer night? Prayer, prayer. We have lost our culture. I have always said, it will not shock you and surprise you. Catherine Kuman died many years ago till today. The man too is looking for who he can feed. Every lady is Catherine Kuman now. One lady disturbed us on campus that Catherine Kuman appeared to her every day. I said, Stop saying this thing because in the next five years, I'm not sure you will survive. Because if the challenges she went through come to you, the way I'm looking at you like this, you can't survive it. Because there was a boy, she was not willing to give up the boy. And Catherine Kuman actually gave up a boy because that you have the mantle of Katin Kuma it means that you may actually be connected to a wrong boyfriend because she was connected to a wrong boyfriend too in fact you may be married the wrong man and in the day of the honeymoon that was the day she said no I choose the glory of God instead of the honey of man so you see the glory that remained upon her came from that pain that no honeymoon no boyfriend no husband but you have five boyfriends, five. How can the man to enter? He can't enter. Because the culture is not there. It, it no day there. The culture no day there. The clothes no go size you. 
Many of you, Babalola, Babalola have died long time ago. I flew into, you see, Ibadan. They took me to CAC churches. I went, I cannot see the trace of the grace of Babalola. Because the people that brought me, in the early in the morning, they wake me up with food. In the afternoon, another food. In the night, another food. I said, I thought Babalola was a man of the mountain. And he prayed. Where is the mountain? Where is the prayer here? The culture is gone. When was the last time you missed breakfast? Breakfast. That you wake up, that Akam, Akam one bread. Abi Akam one, go say, can you just say, no, my life cannot remain like that. And just say, let me take away that one. I was teaching one of those young ladies. I said, okay, stop, eat food for one hour. After one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Do you know where we stop? We stop at 10 o'clock. She cannot fast beyond 10 o'clock. From morning to 10 o'clock. And this is somebody that said, I want the mantle of Benihi. I want Catherine Kuma mantle. I want Babalola mountain. You can't pray for just two hours and you say Babalola mountain. You are very far. Very far. <laughs> because the mantle is looking for the criteria that can fit it. It's not by talking it. And you see, that you saw the revelation. I don't doubt it. But you see, dreams and vision don't fulfill themselves. Men rise up to fulfill them. It doesn't matter what God show you. If you don't wake up, it will remain like that. God show me this. One of my friends, every day he has a dream. If Joseph remains with a dream, only a dream, you know they go anywhere. Dreams have to become reality. Unfulfilled dreams bring frustration. Too much prophecy upon your head brings you to paralysis. Because it will bring you to analysis. Too much analysis bring paralysis. Because when too much prophecy choke, you don't go know which one be which. How do you become a living witness? The Bible is speaking the book of 1 John 5. If you go and read the book of 1 John from 5, it spoke about who is he. Let go and read the entire book of 1 John chapter 5. It speaks about the witness of the heaven and the witness of the earth. Right? Witness. This is the mystery. The Bible said there are three that bear witness in heaven. Go and read the whole book of 1 John chapter 5, please. There are three that bear witness in heaven. He said what? The Father, the Word, and what? The Holy Spirit. He said there are three that bear witness on the earth. The water, the blood, and the Spirit. He said the ones that bear witness in heaven, all of them are what? One. But the ones that bear witness on the all of them are three as one. He now said, but it is the spirit that is truth. Because it's the spirit that is reality. It then means that for a man to become a living witness, he must align to all the witness of the earth and the witness of the heaven. Because the witness of the heavens gives you relevance in heaven. But the witness of the earth gives you relevance on the earth. Give me a lesson I'm saying. Jesus Christ was all God. But the Bible says he came as the word of God became what? Flesh. Later on, the Father approved of him. Later on, the Spirit. Came upon him again. Is that not true? The rest of the heaven. All of them came upon him. He came as the word. The Father approved of him. This is my beloved son upon one word, please. Right? Then the Spirit came upon him and remained. But mind you, he was born of what? water he was born of what blood and also he has a spirit the witness of the earth spirit there is not the holy spirit it's actually the spirit of a man because every human being whether you're babala or whether you don't have the holy ghost you have a spirit and that spirit eh is new man the difference between the holy spirit and the other one is hagiox new man the other one is a concentrated holy separated spirit but this one is a spirit that is not concentrated it's not holy so that what is called 
spirit with capital letter S. That one is your recreated human spirit. So when a man is born again, the Holy Spirit, tabernacle in his human spirit, and make his spirit to become a recreated spirit. I get what I'm saying. So for a man to become a living witness, the father must approve of him. The son must approve of him. And the Holy Spirit must tabernacle upon him. Then he must go through the witness of the water, the witness of the blood, and the witness of the spirit. And that is why Jesus Christ came for baptism. He said, let us do this so that we can fulfill all righteousness. There are so many of you that are not baptized of water. I agree. Even me, I refuse to be baptized. I just got baptized just some time ago. But what I'm trying to let you understand, do it to fulfill all righteousness. Because the circumcision the Bible talks about is that of the heart. It has nothing to do with the physical. But if you can, just do it to fulfill all righteousness. Because sometimes, some of these things just mirror something. If Jesus Christ did not come for that baptismal service, do you know that that Holy Spirit will not descend upon him? Because the Holy Ghost knew that he was the son of God, but it never came upon him until he was baptized of water. So there must be a witness that must approve of him before that spirit can come upon. It's the same way that when you come upon those witnesses legally, another dimension is added unto you. For a man to become a living witness, he must subscribe to the witness of the heavens and the witness of the earth. You must know the mystery that governs God the Father. You must know the mystery that governs God. The, you must know the mystery that governs God the Spirit. I speak that as I preach that as Shekana, the revelation of God. Then you must understand the mystery of waters, the mystery of blood, and the mystery of the realm of the spirit. The reason why many believers are born again today, yet again, they are under all kinds of marine manipulation, blood covenant manipulation, is because they don't understand the mystery of the blood. They don't understand the mystery of water. They don't understand the mystery of spirit. How can you manipulate me with blood when I understand that I'm already taking the blood of Jesus every day? I have been drinking blood since the blood of Jesus. I have been inside water since the water of the Holy Ghost. I have been possessed by a spirit since the Holy Spirit. You understand the devil mimic everything. So if you don't understand this, you will think that your life is just a joke on the earth. Lastly, I want the mystery of the of uh, that then how does a man bear testament as a living witness the book of 1st John chapter 1 verse 1 there has never been a better witness than John the Baptist and I've already uh, that John the beloved right and I've already established that for you that the reason why John the Beloved become the better witness, right? The Bible speaking said, First John 1 from 1. The Bible said, that which was from the beginning, right? Which we have what? Heart, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon with our hand our hands have handled of the word of life say for this life was manifest and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you eternal life which was from the father and the manifested through us for you to become a living witness the first criteria is what that you have what that which we have heart Many of you have heard so much about God. It's okay. It's number one level of witness. But you don't just remember with what you have heard. A living witness, a witness is not just somebody that has heard something. You cannot come to court and say, I am a witness. They say, now read the story. They say, I heard that Esla said they will throw you in jail. That which we have heard. Well, read this for you. Don't worry, we'll be fine. That which we have heard, that which we have 
sin with our kindness is one, not just that, but someone that also what see. Have you seen the word of life? You wait for that to say that which you have also what, which we have looked upon, and which our hands have what handled. Many of you move with them. Say they say, they say this one. They say that one. No, you must hear it. You must be able to see it. You must handle it. You must be able to look upon it for you to become a living witness. It's the same way about the dealings of God. Many of us heard about him. Many of us see God, but we have not truly really encountered him. Many of us have encountered God, but we cannot sustain and maintain that encounter. How can you speak about him? No. For you to become a living witness, you must have seen God. You must have heard about him. You must have encountered him. You must have come to a point where you have handled him. And after you have done that, the last thing you must understand that what he was talking about was that the bare record of what the word of life and this word of life they spoke about it came about christ as light they say we bear record that god is light because that was the testimony that they came to bear record they bear record to the testify that god is light and in him there is no darkness it then means that there is the realm of darkness and there is the realm of light and you and I are supposed to be the witness of light and not the witness of darkness. That are bear record to the witness of darkness. But we are to bear record to the witness of light. But do you know what light is? Because light is a personality too. The Bible is speaking in the book of Genesis chapter 1. He says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the earth. And God said what? Let there be light. That light introduced was Christ Jesus. The same way in the book of John chapter 1. The Bible speaks about in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He speaks about one that came to bear the court and bear witness of a light and a life. So when they speak about the witness of God, they are speaking about life and light. And you and I come to bear witness to life and light. And when you are bearing witness to life and light, you are bearing witness to the Christ Jesus. But by the time for you to bear witness to Christ, it then means you must know the Christ, you must see the Christ, you must handle the Christ. One of the only ways that that can be achieved is when the dimension of Christ is work inside of you. How? By you understanding the revelation of who Christ is. Christ is totally, Christ was revealed in the book of John. But Christ was also revealed in the book of Revelation. Because the true revelation of who Christ is was the seed that was unlocked in the book of Revelation when John was trying to let them understand his dimensions. He speak about the living creatures. That Christ as a personality has dimensions as a given expression as living creatures. And do you understand? It took me time until I had an encounter. One day I was in my room. I was not sleeping. I was waiting on the Lord for many days. And suddenly, that was the first time I was seeing the living creatures came to me. I was heavily fasting and praying. And suddenly, it was like the roof disappeared. And it was as though the house was taken to another location. What happened is that the place begin to vibrate and you see the atmosphere of encounter is always different you will know you just know that something visited you something is coming and i just sense that an angel is tearing up the pool because the lord is a king anytime a king is coming there are entourage that announce him and while i sense that atmosphere i know the lord is coming and i praise up myself and i thought i could be able to undo it and suddenly i saw like splashes of light and as though my door went open and I saw two mighty angels one appeared by my left another appeared by my right and as I stand in our way suddenly as I was looking and I saw with a speed like a rolling wheel I saw something that moved like this I saw something that came like with a face that was moving like a calf and the face came like a calf 
and it went by me as I was trying to demystify what is this suddenly I saw another face came again as an eagle as I was trying to demystify what is this I saw another face came again as a lion and suddenly I fell as flat as dead and I was still wondering my eyes was closed yet again I was seen and I was not sleeping or dreaming no and as they covered within themselves I saw them open themselves into three dimensions foo, foo, foo. and I saw the son of man walk out from among them and he appeared towards me and he stretched forth his hand towards me and he breathed life unto me and I stood upon my feet and he said Philip Cephas stand let me speak unto you he began to speak unto me things in keeping to my life and what he intend to do with me and he said I have come to give you the ark of the nation I have come to bring you to a realm of power and authority he said I have come to add unto you another level another measure he said today is the day of atonement I have come to atone men he said these angels that I see that stand by me they have come to number men that will bear relevance upon the face of the earth for the span of 10 years then another numbering will come again he said we have come to number you he said I will add unto you five personal angels and that was when he added unto me the sky blue angel he said this will be the angel of the constellation this angel will be able to understand the ordinances of the constellations and they will guard your cause he had done to me the red angel he said this will be the angels of impartation the angels of light and fire he had done to me the white angels he said this will be the angels of the presence he said these angels of the presence they will carry a dimension of my presence with you he said you may not know how to sing songs but you will have access to the songs sing from the presence and by you utter them an atmosphere will come to the earth then he said i will add on to you two la two more light angels he said these light angels will be the angels of power they are going to help you to pray he said while jesus christ was praying angels were there to strengthen him he said i will add on to you the light angels that will enable you in the place of prayer immediately after he did that he said i will add on to you the realms of the seraphims and the realms of the cherubims that you can be a carrier of my holiness and of my glory he said today we have come to share a glory with you you will be a partaker of this and through the voice that resounds from among you nations will hear another glory nations will hear another presence and the utterance was strengthened and as i'm speaking to you right now your heart may burn because there are spirits that sit upon the utterances far beyond my age and they breathe it upon it it comes from the realm of an encounter and immediately when those dimensions came he told, as I'm speaking this, I'm feeling an anointing upon my hand. He told me something. He said, Philip Cephas, you belong to me. I said, what does that mean? He said, I have come to help you. A man I help is always better than a man that helps himself. He said, look upon the face of the earth. Everyone that has ever worked with me is someone I decided to help. They are not qualified. I just choose to help them. I said, how can you help me? He said, if you can pray, I will help you. I said, okay, no problem. I rise up, I began to pray. And he said, I will come for you again. I will come for you again. But you must understand that you belong unto me. It doesn't matter what the devil does in my life. He said, I should reckon that a lie. He said, let everybody be lie in my life. Even me, I should be a liar. He said, let only him be truth. It was not long enough while he was done talking he stretched forth his hand towards me I saw light and fire it enters into me and I saw my body begin to radiate with glory I went up on the sky and I disintegrated and I became like bubbles of light all across the nations he said I will send you to the nations I will send your voice to the nations he said I will give your voice sounds in the nations he said, it doesn't matter who like you. It doesn't matter who doesn't like you. He said, your voice will be your identity. And he said, when you call, I will answer. You can never become a living witness until the Lord give you a voice that the nation can hear. And immediately, he said, there are dimensions of the living creatures. He said, these creatures I see here with me. He said, all of them are dimensions of himself. He said, he rode upon the wings of the cherubim's. beams yes but he said the dimension of the calf the dimensions of the lion the dimensions of the eagle the dimension of the lamb all i have himself 
He said there are diverse dimensions of himself. He said this dimension must be walked upon a man. He said, Philip, you need the dimension of a lion. You must behave like a lion. He said, you don't need to be afraid. Lions are not afraid. The dimensions of the living creatures as lions are those that are not afraid. He said, you don't need to be afraid. I am with you as a lion of the tribe of Judah. And I will always prevail for you. He came again. He said, there is a dimension of the eagle. He said, eagle are meant to fly. He said, you will not remain on the ground. You will soar. He said, I will give unto you wings to fly for yourself. I will advance you by the shores of the spirit. I will give your voice to the nations. I will herald it to the nations. He said, I will give you wings for you to fly. It doesn't matter the storm of life. Even if I choose to pass life, God come for me again. Why? Because the dimension of the ego is supposed to navigate all situations. He said, I will give you the dimension of the ox. The dimension of the ox to be able to bear the burden of others. To be able to bear burden. It doesn't matter how tired I am. Early in the morning, I'll be leaving to Zaria. Early in the morning, tomorrow. I have a meeting, Dr. Akbami Church, in Zaria. Early in the morning, I'm there. I will not die on the road. You don't need to worry. I will not crash. No. My body will not be given to death. When I'm done, I will lay down my life. Why? Because there's a dimension of the ox. You don't pity the ox. The ox is meant to carry body. It's meant to carry load. You don't pity him. No. On ease lies the head that wear the crown. For you to become a living witness, you must be able to carry the burden of others. You must be able to cry for others. He said, I will give you the grace to bear the burden of others. He said, yet again, I will walk upon another dimension of the living creatures. It's the dimension of the lamb. You must be meek. You must be king. You must be simple. You must be humbled. Jesus Christ was the lion of the tribe of Judah. He was the lamb that was slain. He was the eagle. He was also the ox. You must be able to understand. You must be a living witness. You must bear the dimension of the Christ. He said, you must be humble, O Philosophers. For I resist proud men. I give grace to humble men. He said, so long as you can be a humble man. Yet again, a lion. I will be able to lift you up. It doesn't matter how I may look humble. I may look simple. The kingdom of darkness know that there is a voice behind the humility. You must be able to understand that being simple should not be insulted jesus christ was simple they spoke against him they said all kinds of things that is the danger but god will always lift a humble man and always resist a proud man it's part of the dimension of a witness every living witness must be simple you must be humble a revival is coming a revival of love a revival of power a revival of humility a revival of humbleness a revival of holiness I'm tired of proud people, proud men and women. God is the one that helped you. You became anointed. There is nothing special about it. Anybody can become anointed, my friends. If you are willing to pay the price, there is nothing special about me. There is nothing special about Itaosa. Nothing special. They are normal men. Babalola is a man like you. The only difference is that he pray. But see, Itaosa is a man like you. The only difference is just that he pray. Baba Lola, everybody, Catherine Kuma is just a normal woman like you. The only difference was that God helped her and she prayed. The same way, Elijah in scripture is a man like you. A man of like passion like you and I. But the Bible says he pray earnestly. He pray earnestly. If you can pray, my brothers, things will change. Prayer is a very big difference, my friends. Are you willing to become part of the living weakness? Or you just want to live your life anyhow and die anyhow? No. I cannot just exist like that and go no when i'm going the nations we know when i'm going the world must know when we are living they must know hey Emmanuel, 
Ima Immanuel Ima 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 Immanuel Ima Ima Immanuel Set my heart on fire for you. I wanna burn for you. Oh no.
life Holy Spirit, you are my life Today, you are my life Holy Spirit, you are my life Today, you are my life Holy Spirit, you are my life Today, you are my life Holy Spirit, you are my life Today Life. Holy Spirit, you are not life. Today, you are not life. Holy Spirit, you are not life. Today, you are not alive. Today, you are not alive. Be quiet to you tonight. Oh, Philip, the pastor, you who that you help me tonight. Baba, we pray. We cry to you tonight. Oh, Philip, the pastor, you who that you help me tonight. Baba, we call you. Can you anoint us tonight? Oh, Philip, the pastor, you who that you help me tonight. Baba, we call you. We cry to you tonight. Oh, Philip, the pastor, you hope that you help me tonight. Jesus, we call you. We cry to you tonight. Baba, we call you. We cry to you tonight. Oh, Philip, the pastor, you hope that you help me tonight. Jesus, we cry, we cry to you tonight. Oh, give me that last cry, you know that you are happy tonight. Holy Spirit, we cry, we cry to you tonight. Oh, give me that last cry, you know that you are happy tonight. Baba, we cry. We cry to you tonight. Oh, Philip, the pastor, you know that you are happy tonight. Jesus, we call you. Can you wish for him tonight? Oh, Philip, the pastor, you know that you are happy tonight. Jesus, we call you. Can you raise it to us tonight? Oh, Philip, the pastor, you know that you are happy tonight. Jesus, we call you. Can you raise watchmen tonight? Oh, Philip, the pastor, you know that you are happy tonight. Mami, let me, mami, let me. Mami la ne, mamu ne ho. I baba ne le buhu. Ebe mamu le, mamu ne ho. Mami la ne, mamu ne. Mami la ne, mamu ne ho. I baba ne le buhu. Ebe mamu le, mamu ne ho. Mami la ne, mamu ne. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, your life will change. You are my Lord, 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 Let me hear you cry.
of your spirit be open right now one two three be open be open be open be open i see there's someone here your ear has been open right now your ear hold up hold up hold up your ear has been open you are going to begin to hear hear in the spirit wow wow i see someone like a flame on upon your head like a hollow a hollow flame upon your head right now Right now, hold on, hold on, ushers, 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 ushers. It's like a flame, it's like a flame. Touch, touch, touch. Come, receive it. No fire, no fire, no fire. I'm not coming down from the stage here. I see an angel that walk with me. 
an angel of power moving to this side right in the name of jesus angels of the lord begin to touch them from this side to the other side i say non bring prophetic people prophetic people i open your eyes right now eyes be open hold them hold them i say an anointing for the prophetic an anointing for the prophetic at night in the daytime you will hear you will hear and you will speak i give you a chance oh my god i say fire bonnet the flame that bonnet the flame that bonnet the flame that bonnet the flame that bonnet mightily 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 carry the oil carry the oil i see an oil of the night i see it coming upon a guy i see it coming upon a guy heavily a, a guy an apostolic guy heavily heavily i say a heavy oil coming upon you a heavy anointing one two three receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it hold it oh my god oh my god hold it hold it a heavy apostolic grace let him not break the head mightily i see someone here i see someone here i see angels of power angels of power i feel see the power of god before as i step up my hand i have to be set us one with god one with god an angel with god an angel with god my name is philip Cephas. i belong to god at this moment let the angels that work with me i provoke the realms of the cherubims i provoke the realms of the seraphims i provoke them i provoke them upon each and every one clothe them with power oh my god i see a healing evangelist a healing evangelist i see someone a mighty grace of healing is coming upon you now you cannot stand it at the count of three one two three receive the grace hold on receive the grace healing grace i activate you i activate you i call you higher i call you higher i call you higher i call you higher i elevate you i see a promotion in the spirit i see a promotion in the spirit i see a promotion a promotion in the spirit a promotion in the spirit i promote you you have been remain you have remained long in that realm you have stayed long in that realm i have come with anger in my spirit i don't need any sound another major i see men limited i see a spirit of limitation i see a spirit of limitation a spirit of bondage a spirit of limitation i don't need to lay hands on you you don't know who i am i don't need to lay hands on you no no i say a spirit of limitation as i stretch out my hand in the name of jesus christ of nazareth at the count of three let that yoke be broken one two three break 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 you are delivered i see someone being oppressed at night or just go to the back i see someone being oppressed I see that demonic spirit leaving you right now, leaving you right now. I am Philip Cephas. I add my voice to your verse. You are in Shekinah, an encounter with God. God power, God wisdom, God love. I'm not here to waste your time. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom I am and in whom I stand, I release the fire of God. I release the power of God. Every demon that has followed you here, every demon that has followed you here, out of her. Out of her, out of him now. Many of you have lost the grace of God. You have lost the grace of God. Lift up your hands. I see the Lord adding grace, adding grace, adding grace. At the count of three, at the count of three, Jesus Christ, I am one of yours. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release the grace of God. I release the grace of God. All shall hold them. I release the grace of God. I release the grace of God. At the count of three. One, two, three. Carry. Yes, yes, the grace of God is upon you. The grace of God. I see the spirit of prayer, the spirit of prayer and supplication. I refuse it from backsliding. 
I refuse you from backsliding. At the count of three, let a heavy spirit of prayer and supplication recommend. One, two, three. Receive the grace. Receive the grace. Receive the grace. A heavy body. A heavy body. A heavy, a heavy body. A body for prayer. A body for supplication. Amen. I see someone that is sick in your body. I see sickness in your body. Put your hand wherever you are sick. Down wherever you are sick. I see an angel of healing. An angel of healing. And your hand wherever you are sick. Right now, enter to the Lord. Touch them right now. Touch them right now. At the count of three. One, two, three. Let that yoke be broken. Let that yoke be broken. Let that yoke be broken. Let the pain be gone. Let the pain be gone. I see few people here. You are being numbered among the living witness. You dream, you see yourself preaching the gospel. You see yourself casting out demons. You see yourself doing the work of God. Right now, there is a grace for you. In the name of Jesus, you will not backslide. I release that grace upon you. I pray you shout Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. I release the grace. I release the grace. I release the grace. Become a living witness. I see the hand of God coming upon somebody in the congregation. 